Hello Virgos! Welcome to your weekly reading with me, Cindy! <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's just be silly. All right, Virgo, here's the thing now. We're gonna get you, well, I'm gonna try anyway, to get you um, some clarity. What kind of clarity is it again? Surprising clarity, that's it. To get you some surprising clarity. Sorry, coming out of a Leo reading that must have had almost every card in my three decks that I'm using come out. <laughs> Sure. Oh, well, I'll get the surprising clarity for Leo. When at the end of the day, it was like, just go forward with love and it'll all work out. So let's see for you, Virgo, what is this surprising clarity? Wow. I know it's itchy. Okay. I think we're connecting. My nose is itchy. So what is the topic going to be? What are we going to talk to Virgo about in this surprising clarity today? Are you going to bring surprise and clarity to them in? What shall we bring clarity in? Okay, so you're going to be the complete opposite of Leo. You're going to be like hard to get cards out. Virgo, Virgo, what is this clarity in? Where are we bringing clarity to Virgo? But, well, uh, I know, I know. Virgo knows everything already. <laughs> There's nothing to clear up for them. They've already got the clarity. Apparently, I can't believe this. Nothing has... It's so difficult to come out all week. I'm gonna force it. I'll do four shuffles with the deck of tape over the top. Four shuffles, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna pull three from the top. I'm not gonna look at them until they're all down. There. Oh gosh, you don't even, <laughs> the devil. Before I turned the camera on, I was pre-shuffling and every time the devil came up in your split and it was like the devil in the sun, the devil in the star, the devil in the ten of cups. It was like, you know, buddy, you're messing with all this good stuff. And now here he is at the bottom. So perhaps we're going to get some clarity in something that is making you feel trapped, something that's making you feel anxious, something that you're just, you know, having a little addiction for. you got the seven of wands. Ooh, the Ten of Swords. And the Knight of Wands here. Okay, here, I'll show you. Seven of Wands. It's pretty good energy. But then you get the Ten of Swords here. I guess it went in there because the seven of, seven of Wands can be a little bit about being defensive, trying to understand a situation, trying to get, I always like to describe it as trying to get the upper hand or the higher ground so that you can see the situation better and understand it fully. And perhaps that happened and then it went into the Ten of Swords where like, you know, there's a broken sword going into this heart. And the Ten of Swords is about an ending. It's a significant ending in something that you understood it to be how you understood yourself, how you understood someone else. And then the Knight of Wands comes in. The Knight of Wands is coming in looking at this, you know, and it's interesting because I feel like myself, I feel like the Seven of Wands and the Ten of Swords cards are your energy somehow. And this Knight of Wands is coming towards it. Here, I'll show you all three as they sit like on the table in the order so you can see how the energy is playing out. See, I feel like the Seven of Wands, something had you feeling kind of defensive, confused, trying to get a better handle on it, you know, feeling a little bit attacked perhaps. And then the Ten of Swords comes in and that's quite painful energy and there's some sort of ending here. And then the Knight of Wands is to me like looking in on this, like wanting to come in. Um, this is a very Casanova-like Knight of Wands to me, a little bit of romantic, quite, quite a passionate individual, quite a passionate individual, very warm, very dynamic. Um, there's so much information for me that comes off of this card in particular with this knight. This knight is very intuitive. I mean, he's riding a horse with a unicorn. It's a unicorn. So the intuition is connected. There's magic behind this knight and it's 
I want to say it can be felt. It's a very dynamic. Um, it could be a little addictive, the energy of this individual, which is, you know, interesting because we have the devil. And then we have the Hierophant underneath. Interesting combination. The underlying is the Hierophant sitting under the devil. It's almost as if something is blocking a commitment here. Something is blocking spiritual growth. The, the devil. This devil card is quite significant. I'm going to pull, I don't always, I will sometimes, but I am definitely going to pull clarifiers on your, your bottom card here. Because as I said, it kept coming up in the splits. It kept coming up in the splits for the pre-shuffle. And I don't feel though that this Knight of Wands is devilish in any way. There might be some sort of concern or some sort of thoughts going through your head that maybe this person's just a player. They're coming in for a one night stand and then they're out of there. They get what they want, what they need, and then that's bye bye, so long. And if you have a broken heart, you don't need that. Right. Well, unless it's specifically what you're looking for. Like, but if you have feelings for someone that you don't want that energy around it usually, right? Because that would probably just hurt your heart more. Um, so yeah, this Ten of Swords, this Knight wants to come in and I feel like warm it, warm it up again for you, but the devil is sitting there. I'm going to go into the little deck right away. I'm not going to, because I have another, the doggy, magic dog deck, tarot deck, <laughs> magic dog deck, um, that I'm going to pull out in a minute, but let's get into the devil. This devil, what is this devil here for? Why is the devil card here? The seven of wands. Okay. Yeah. And the world. It's shit from your past. It's playing in your head, messing with you. <laughs> what's going on. Because the seven of wands is the first card before you had the broken heart. So things that went on in the past that you couldn't figure out, you couldn't understand maybe why someone was acting a certain way or doing a certain something. And then maybe when you discovered what it was, you're like, God damn them, they were playing me. And it broke your heart. Like kind of something like that feels like happened. So this devil card is all about that seven of wands. It's all about something that happened in the past that have made, you know, and it's not unreasonable to, you know, have your defenses up because these red flags signified this. I missed it and that's how it came out. So now I'm gonna be smarter, right? I'm seeing something that reminds me of that energy from before, but you have the world card here. It's like you're holding back a new beginning in something because of that. And you know what? You have to work that out on your own. You can't just go by my reading and go, oh, I'm gonna feel better now. Thanks, Cindy. I'm just gonna not look at those red flags. You can't do that. You have to work this shit out, right? But this is just to give you clarity. Okay. So there is the world card is here. So there is a very good cycle to end all cycles. This is a positive card. You're coming out of a cycle. Obviously, the Ten of Swords is a significant ending, a significant ending here. And um, I feel that there's somebody. I don't know. We'll have to see what cards come up. Sometimes I feel like it's funny, like sometimes, sometimes in this reading right now, I feel like this is the person that made you defensive. But I don't feel it strongly for others. There might be someone else. You're going to know how it plays out for you. Like if the person from your past kind of hurt you, it feels like they're coming forward again. Mm, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's, mm, but I don't know. The cards are saying <laughs> the world. change but it's up to you if you want to accept that change or not you don't have to do that what am i doing oh yeah just getting like all defensive for you i hear you girl i hear you boy like yeah um i don't know what is virgo like for that put that in the comments i always like to know i haven't learned about that i was reading something you know like how different signs are and i've learned a lot too like Cancerians are very forgiving. Oh my God. It's like they're addicted to that. They're always coming back for more. I'm like, oh my goodness. They're like real troopers. Um, but being an Aries, I know like a lot of Aries and I think fire signs in general. When somebody hurts you, mm, there is no like one, two, like fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you, fool me. No, what is that? 
<laughs> right. The third time, there's usually no second or third time. It's like that. Yeah, that was painful. I don't know if I went back there. So I'm a little sympathetic towards you if this is like the same person. So let's find out. Let's find that show. I could just sit here and speculate. It's so entertaining, but it's it's your energy. I don't want to. You know, we want to get clarity, right? And this seems like something you want to be clear on. You want to know. Seven of Wands. What was going on here? Why was it defensive? Why was there defense here? What was going on? So many cards are coming out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a little heavy. We have the Two of Wands. Usually about a choice. Crossroads. Which way do you go? Maybe a choice in partners. It's about passion, desire. The Ten of Swords again. Somebody probably made a choice here. Maybe they made you feel like a choice. Come on, Virgo, you're so freaking sexy. You don't need to be a choice. You need to be the choice, right? Not a choice, the choice. So the Ten of Sky, then we have the Queen of Swords. Uh, she just cut shit out. I feel like maybe you cut this person out. You're like, I'm done with this shit. This hurt. You hurt me, I'm done with that. And then we have, you're kind of moving Trying to get grounded, right? With the Knight of Pentacles. Oh no, that was them. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? That's them coming back, trying to be different. How many times has this person tried to come back now? That's totally them. That is their energy. It just screamed at me like, no, no. That's them. They're coming back. You cut them out. So they try a different way. They're trying to be different, but are they different? No, I don't want to clarify that yet. It's like, oh my gosh. This person sh showed up as the Knight of Pentacles, which is very slow moving. You know, I want to say kind of cautious, knowing that they've hurt you and that your guard is up and you're the Queen of Swords, like you've already cut them out once, but they're sort of trying to figure out how to get back in, trying to figure out how to get back in. And how is this? The call. Oh, this card, the call. This is a little bit like the Wheel of Fortune. Like looking for the right opportunity, like a little bit of divine timing in that. Which is, it makes sense that it's sitting with their um, Knight of Pentacles. Being like hesitant, not really moving, but watching. Maybe sending the odd little message, how you doing? <laughs> not responding because you're like cutting that out. And then the tower, and I feel like it's been a tower moment for this person that you have had enough of the shit. It's like a tower moment. But so now they're trying the Knight of Wands. They're trying to come in very passionately. Gosh, is this the same person? It feels like it with these two knights here. It feels like it with the two knights here. It does. And, but they're coming in with this different approach, with this Knight of Wands energy. And it's almost, you know, because I said it, it's almost like it could be feeling addictive, this energy a little bit. It's almost like they know what really turns your switches on. Which switches to kind of activate in the right order on a very passionate level here. Hmm... Okay, well, let's find out specifically. Oh, the split. We have the wheel, the wheel of fortune, and the hierophant. I wonder for some of you if this was a committed relationship. The hierophant sitting under the devil. Okay, so what was this tell moment? Did you just say enough is enough? But I don't think this, I think this, I don't think this person wants to lose this connection with you, but you know, we all got to lay in the bed we make, the tower. The seven of cups and the two of swords. Yeah, I feel like, here, let you see. <laughs> Seven of Cups and the Two of Swords. I feel like the tower for them here. Oh, actually, no, I'm seeing it. it's more like the Two of Swords into the Seven of Cups. 
It's like not knowing how to do this, not knowing how to fix this, not knowing which way to go, um, being afraid that if you, they make a decision and, and choose a certain path or a certain angle or technique or whatever to kind of try to smooth things over that it won't be right. So, But if I do this one, it won't be right. So they're sitting there in indecision, which, you know, it doesn't, doesn't help anything because it's almost like, well, they're not communicating very well. So you really don't understand what the issue was. But the Seven of Cups now, I feel like this person was very unfocused. Almost letting their imagination lead them to places. Where did, okay. The two, because I'm kind of getting this message that this person didn't necessarily stray or cheat. I feel like they may have on like an imaginary level, which is kind of weird, right? Like, well, not, I guess not. Yeah, like it almost feels like it felt like your person was at a crossroads. They really physically weren't in this lifetime, like in this life experience. But in their mind, they kind of were, which in a sense, well, if you're having, like, I don't know. Let's just say maybe they had someone at work that they really liked. I, I'm just coming up with that because someone that maybe they're seeing every day that's not you. And they knew it wasn't a possibility. Maybe that person was very happily married, had kids. There was, like, no way that was going to happen. But this person was, like, a fantasy to them. So they spent a lot of time fantasizing about it. Maybe spend a lot of time like looking at their social media and you found that or, you know, uh, but nothing really happened and nothing would, but still, it's still almost like, it's emotional cheating, right? Maybe it was more like an emotional cheating I'm getting here. Let's see the two of fire, the two of wands. Nine of Wands and the Ace of Swords. Okay. So I think this is the story. This is like an emotional cheating here. And with the Nine of Wands, this person is feeling really battered and worn. So for whatever reason, whatever is going on in your person's life, this person's life, it's not to excuse them. I'm not trying to do that. We're just bringing clarity, right? Um, they were feeling like just worn out, exhausted perhaps beaten down and they were looking for something new and it's a sword so it could be clarity but because we're kind of feeling like this seven of cups like almost having like a fantasy affair in their mind but to the point where it's obsessive like every almost every waking, waking moment they're in and out of like some kind of fantasy regarding this person and that was like a new reality for them this is so deep it's like that like was the ace of swords for them it was sort of like bringing them something new in their mind they needed to escape something because they were in the nine of wands and so they created like this fantasy in their mind you know which is too bad because what you know they should have like brought that with you like i have some fantasies honey let's talk about them you know like that would be better than um and it'll probably be more fulfilling but yeah i feel like they kind of maybe did that and the devil card too like it was obsessive they were obsessive with this person and it's causing a new cycle to happen here, though, with this world card. Okay, well, let's just find out. What does this new cycle bring in for you? I think we're getting some clarity here on why maybe this person was maybe behaving this way. It doesn't make it right, but it's just to give you some clarity. What does this world card bring in, this new cycle for Virgo? Wow, the Scorpio card. Death here. So there is an ending and a rebirth. What is the... Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's... Yeah, you have to do what you have to do. Um, and depending how this plays too, though, like some of you, the rebirth could be, 
seeing this situation and realizing, you know, nothing, there was really no, there was no chance either. Like there was no way this person was going to hook up with your person. They wouldn't have done that. They were in a good place or whatever. It was just literally felt like your person was having this affair in their mind. Okay. So what comes in after the death card for Virgo? What comes in after the death card for Virgo? Oh, you have, oh wow, look at you. Look at you, Virgo. Yeah, got <laughs> the justice card and the ace of wands, honey. You're gonna get justice, so justice shall be served. Um, you're also going to get balance, harmony here. Things will come into alignment quite well and you will have a new beginning with lots of passion. Lots of passion. Who that you choose that to be is up to you. If it's this person, um, where's this person right now in terms of their mental headspace? Where's this person right now in terms of their mental headspace? They're the Knight of Swords. They're really rushing towards something. What are they rushing towards? They're rushing towards the star. So if this person, I want to say, has ever said to you, you know, you're my dream come true. You're my wish. You're everything I could have wished for. You're everything I could have wanted. I could want. If they've ever heard you like that, I want to say then it's probably you that they're rushing towards. They're rushing towards something. Yeah. We do have the Six of Pentacles too. So trying to get the balance and harmony. We have the scales. This dude. Stand up. This dude. Focus. Come on. We can do it. Look. Yeah. He's holding these two little scales here, right? Right. And then what are you getting? You are getting. You're getting. Come on. There's the scales. Okay. So. This person is in a better headspace. Oh yeah, the, the Nine of Cups is at the bottom here. You're gonna get happiness. You're gonna be happy, but you have choices, right? You have choices and you always have the freedom to choose. No matter what the reading says, my reading, anyone's reading, you have, you know, you gotta do what you wanna do. That's the most important thing you can ever do for yourself. And there, okay, there you go, Virgo. That was interesting, huh? That was very interesting. I hope that brought some clarity for you into that um, situation. That was a whole idea of surprising clarity. That was a surprise, huh? Kind of was, seemed pretty clear. All right, thank you so much, my sexy Virgos. Have a great week. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.